Alright everyone, welcome back. Are you ready to dive into some truly massive galaxies? Oh, definitely. I've been waiting for this one. Today, we're looking at galaxies that make our own Milky Way. The place we call home look like a tiny speck of dust in the universe. That's a perfect way to put it. We've got five mind-blowing galaxies on our list today. Malin 1, UGC 2885, Messier 87 or M87, IC 1101, and lastly, Messier 60 also known as M60. Talk about a lineup of galactic titans. Totally. Let's jump right in with Malin 1, a spiral galaxy that's a jaw-dropping six times wider than the Milky Way. It has a diameter of around 650,000 light years. It's a monster of a galaxy, but incredibly faint. Malin 1 is what astronomers call a low surface brightness galaxy. Low surface brightness? So it's like hiding in plain sight or something? Kind of. Imagine a sprawling city but the lights are really dim and spread out. That's what a low surface brightness galaxy is like. So it's massive, but hard to see. Exactly. Its stars are so spread out that it almost blends into the background darkness of space, making it tricky for astronomers to study. Got it. Now let's talk about UGC 2885, another spiral galaxy. But this one has a unique twister bar running right through the center. Ah, yes, a barred spiral galaxy. It's like a cosmic highway of stars and gas stretching across the galaxy's core. So what's the story with these bars? What makes them so interesting? Well, imagine the galaxy is a spinning disk of stars, gas, and dust. The bar acts as a mixer, funneling gas and dust toward the center, which can help create new stars. So it's like a star-making machine? Precisely. And some scientists believe these bars might even influence the supermassive black hole lurking at the galaxy's core. Speaking of massive, UGC 2885 is estimated to contain, get ready for it, a trillion stars. I can hardly wrap my mind around that. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? It makes you wonder about the possibilities for other life forms out there. And here's another cool fact. UGC 2885 might be part of a supercluster called the Pisces-Perseus supercluster. So what's a supercluster, and why is it significant? Imagine a giant city made of galaxies instead of buildings. Superclusters are these vast congregations of galaxies spread across enormous distances. So if UGC 2885 is in this supercluster, it's like being a resident of a cosmic megacity. Exactly. All these galaxies are gravitationally connected, interacting in ways we're still working to understand. It's amazing how everything's linked on such a huge scale. Let's shift gears a bit to Messier 87, or M87, which is an elliptical galaxy. Elliptical galaxies are pretty different from spirals. They're like the ancient sages of the universe, made mostly of older stars and appearing smooth and almost featureless. So no spiral arms or dust lanes like we see in other galaxies? Not really. They're more settled, having had a long, active past. And M87 is one of the biggest and most impressive. It has trillions of stars, way more than the Milky Way, and around 15,000 globular clusters. Our Milky Way only has about 150. What makes these clusters so special? Globular clusters are like tightly packed neighborhoods of stars that orbit the galaxy's core. M87's huge number of clusters hints at a long, eventful history, possibly involving mergers with other galaxies. So many stars packed together mind-blowing. And M87 is also part of the Virgo cluster. Right? That's a massive gathering of around 2,000 galaxies. Yes, and M87 is one of the dominant members. Its immense gravity influences the orbits and interactions of its galactic neighbors. Talk about having cosmic influence. Now let's move on to IC 1101, the champion of galaxy size. IC 1101 is truly unique. It's a lenticular galaxy, which is a sort of hybrid. It has a disk but lacks the distinct arms of a spiral, and its size is absolutely staggering. Right. It's estimated to be between 400,000 and 550,000 light years across. I mean, seriously. To put that in perspective, it would take a beam of light half a million years just to travel from one end of IC 1101 to the other. Now that's big. That's just mind-blowing. What else is happening inside this colossal galaxy? Well, it has one of the largest galactic cores we've ever observed, and at its heart, a supermassive black hole. I had a feeling. So what makes these black holes so incredibly massive? Supermassive black holes are millions or even billions of times more massive than our sun. Their gravity warps space and time, and they're still one of the biggest mysteries in astrophysics. Our final stop takes us back to the Virgo Cluster, 
where we find Messier 60 or M60, another elliptical galaxy. Not quite as enormous as IC1101, but still a giant compared to the Milky Way. Absolutely. M60 has a mass of about a trillion suns. Just imagine the gravitational forces at play. And like the other galaxies we've covered, M60 has a supermassive black hole. But this one's especially massive. It's about 4.5 billion times the mass of our sun. It's staggering to think about how these black holes shape the evolution of entire galaxies. They're like the architects of the universe, influencing the distribution of matter and energy on a grand scale. And remember, this is just a glimpse of what's out there. The universe is filled with galaxies, each a world unto itself. Absolutely. So next time you look up at the stars, remember the vastness of the cosmos and all the mysteries it holds. Who knows what other wonders are waiting to be uncovered. The journey of discovery never ends. Couldn't agree more. The universe is full of surprises, and we're just beginning to scratch the surface. Leave a comment below with your favorite galaxy from today's lineup, or if there's another topic you'd love us to explore. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to Rare One for more incredible deep space discoveries and cosmic mysteries. See you next time.